Other chemicals that we add to the feed, CH3, CH27, CH, CH, CH27, OOH is alcohol. On the end, which tells you this is going to be an oil. Um, oil, highly concentrated food, nine calories per gram, including olive oil. Uh, what's worse about oil, not only is it pure fat, but we take it and heat it up at very high temperatures. And then we use things to, like sponges to soak the grease up. We call those things French fries or potato chips. What I suggest to patients instead of eating fried foods is they should just find the deep fryer, stick their head in it and suck because that's what they're doing when they're eating fried foods. It's called the pleasure trap. It's the artificial stimulation of dopamine in the brain. It's the reason why people are having trouble with dietary excess. So let's take a look at how it works with food. Uh, food uh, dopamine production is proportional to uh, caloric density. So for example, salad has 100 calories a pound. You know, if you eat salad, you might get a tiny little bit of dopamine per, uh, secretion, but not much because your brain knows that at 100 calories a pound, you'd need 20 pounds a day just to try to meet your basal, basic metabolic needs. So it's not likely you could eat 20 pounds of salad a day. So if you eat salad, your brain recognizes, you know, it might have a little bit of food value to it, but not much. So it's not going to get really excited. It's not going to be a lot of dopamine production. Therefore, it's not going to taste as good. Fruit has 300 calories a pound. So you wouldn't need 20 pounds of uh, fruit a day. You'd need about seven pounds of fruit a day. But, you know, at least it's biologically possible. If you started in the morning and didn't stop till night, you get enough calories in to survive. And so fruit tastes better than salad because there's 300 calories per pound instead of 100 calories per pound, more dopamine production when you eat it. Potatoes, rice, and beans, on the other hand, have about 500 calories a pound. So you'd only need about four pounds of food, of this type of food in order to survive, rather than 20 pounds of salad. So if you're hungry, you're going to prefer to have potatoes, rice, and beans over the lower caloric density foods like salad. Let's say you could invent a food. Of course, this doesn't exist in nature, but let's say you invented a food and we call that food, um, I don't know, ice cream. When we introduced it at the World's Fair. Do you think it would have rave reviews with 1,200 calories a pound? You betcha. Now, what's interesting about ice cream is if you taste ice cream when it's cold, uh, it tastes good to people. But if you warm ice cream up to room temperature till it's a liquid and you taste it, it'll be described as sickly sweet. And the reason why that is, is when you have something artificially cold like ice cream, remember ice cream doesn't exist in nature. You've never slipped on an ice cream pond or seen it uh, form naturally. So when you make ice cream artificially cold like that, you have to super saturate it with sugar in order to be able to taste the sweetness because at an artificially cold temperature, your taste mechanisms don't work well. And as a consequence, without it being super saturated, it wouldn't taste good. When you warm ice cream up, you can taste what's actually there and you describe it as sickly sweet. Well, it makes you just as sick when it's cold, but you don't know it because you've bypassed your normal detection mechanism. What if we invented a food with a higher caloric density than ice cream? What if it had 1,500 calories a pound instead of 1,200 calories a pound? Do you think people would like it? Do you think people would call it the staff of life? Because sure enough, bread, with its crunchy outside and soft inside, has 1,500 calories per pound, higher caloric density than ice cream. And that's before you melt coagulated cow pus all over it and turn it into a butter boat. I want to ask you, have you ever been in a restaurant and they put this stuff out on the table? Hot basket of French bread, steaming hot. You smell that, mmm. And what do you do? You open that napkin up and you have a piece or two or three, don't you? And pretty soon you notice that the bread is gone. There's no more bread. So you push that basket to the edge of the table and you wait. And you wait, and you wait for the waiter or waitress to come around. And of course, then they say, hey, did you want some more bread? And you have to pretend like, you know, you didn't know it was empty. And then you say, yeah, sure, why not? 
But what are you really thinking? You're thinking, do they want a tip or not? And they bring you some more bread, you might even have some more of it. But you never go into that restaurant and first thing you do is sit down and say, hey, waiter, bring me three large baked potatoes because I'd like to eat those before I order my dinner. Why don't you order three large baked potatoes before you order your dinner? Because if you ate three large baked potatoes, you'd be full. The human stomach only holds about 500 calories or three large baked potatoes in volume. On the other hand, 500 calories of bread only takes about a third of the stomach. So you can see it'd be much easier to gain weight eating bread than it is eating potatoes. Pure sugar. 1,800 calories a pound, but you never go into that restaurant, take 11 packets of those sugar, and just look, eat that sugar up. Why not? It's free. The stuff's so cheap, they don't even have to charge you for it. You think that's disgusting, huh? I want to ask you, how many have ever had one of these? Old style Coca-Cola? How many teaspoons of sugar? Now, the old had 11. I think the new, they can get 12 into a little more phosphoric acid to keep that sugar from coming out of solution. They used to use cocaine. Now they use caffeine, probably more addictive. And it used to be that the Coke was a special treat, but no more. Now we've got the big gulp, the super gulp, the double gulp, and the express gulp with free refills. And pretty soon, I'm pretty sure you're going to need a bucket. That's how you're going to have to get your soda pop. I think in the future, Chiropractors will get most of their work from treating people that had a super big gulp at 7-Eleven. Yeah, I think that's what's coming. So today, just the sugar in soda pop, not sugar, but just the sugar in uh, soda pop is responsible for up to 25% of the calories of teenagers in the United States. But we don't know why they're getting so fat and sick. It's, it's a complete mystery. So what tastes better, chocolate or salad? Chocolate has 2,500 calories per pound, 25 times the caloric density of salad. And as you, as you would expect, chocolate tastes better than salad. If you blindfold somebody, in fact, if you blindfold 100 people from 100 cultures and you give them a mouthful of salad versus a mouthful of chocolate, you think they can tell the difference? You betcha. In fact, it was interesting. They did a survey of women, not men, just women. And they asked women, what would you rather do? Have mad, hot, passionate sex or eat chocolate? And the two most common responses were what kind of chocolate and how many pieces are we talking about? Some of you are salivating right now just looking at the picture, for goodness sake. It's called the pleasure trap. It's the hidden force that undermines health and happiness. It's the reason why people are overweight, and it's the reason why we have the chronic degenerative diseases that we're suffering with today. So it brings us to one question, and that question is, why do we eat? Why don't we just stop it? Why don't we say enough is enough? Think how much time and trouble and money and expense and worry we could eliminate if we just stopped eating altogether forever. So what's the catch? There's always a catch. So the catch is if we stop eating forever, we die. Now the average 70 kilogram male can fast about 70 days before they transition from fasting to starvation and then deplete their vital reserves and, and die. But what is it after 70 days when we've depleted our reserves that we need from eating, why do people die if they enter starvation? What is it that kills us? What, boredom? No, it's not boredom. It's that there's things about eating we need to do in order to get enough of the raw materials necessary to survive. So what are those raw materials? Why do we need to eat? Number one, we need calories. We need a source of fuel. Although we can go a long time by fasting, which is a process of changing our primary fuel from glucose to burning ketones or a byproduct of ketones, particularly beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Um, the brain itself in the human being is the major burner of glucose. And so the brain in the human is two and a half times larger than our uh, 
nearest relatives. And as a consequence, if we were to not be able to fast, that is not be able to convert our brain from burning um, sugar to burning fat, we could only go about a week or so, much like our chimpanzee cousins. Um, that's why you'll never see the chimps wandering away from the tropics because they need a constant source of uh, calories year round because they don't fast like we do. And so because we have this ability to train our, change our brain from burning uh, sugar to bring fat, we're able to fast. But nonetheless, we still have to have a source of calories on an ongoing basis or we enter starvation. Now, if all we needed was calories, it'd be really simple. What's the most concentrated source of calories that people are exposed to? Oil. 